Hey everybody, Melissa Woods here for Welcome to the Woods. I'm excited to show you a furniture makeover that took me a lot of time but was an incredible transformation. I was gifted this vintage hutch handed down from my husband's grandma. She gave it to us because I wanted it for my daughter, Lily. It has a drop down desk and lots of lock storage which I knew she would love. The first thing I did to refinish this piece is to take off all of the hardware. Now this piece is solid maple and because maple is a fairly blemish free wood and it has a beautiful light grain, I really wanted to restore this piece to its natural wood color. This hutch was really not my style but looking at it I saw some of the clean lines that I could pull out and I decided I was going to remove some of the aspects that were kind of ornate on this piece to make it more streamlined and more like mid-century modern, which is my style. As you can imagine, prep work is one of the most tedious, but also one of the most important aspects of a furniture makeover like this. The more prep work you do, the better your end result will come out. So I'm removing all of the drawers and taking apart as much of the hutch as I possibly can. Now, the middle piece in there, it was nailed in from the back, so once I got those nails out, that just slid out as a whole. Cool thing, though, is I found some old newspaper in there. <laughs> the scrolled piece of wood that was on the top of this little cubby system that gave it an ornate look was easy to pound off from the backside. Here's a shot of all the different pieces of the hutch laid out separately for me to work on it. Now I'm going to tape off all the window panes of this grid. This was such a nuisance, but I had these like corner painters tape which helped and I was able to slide the edge of the tape underneath the grid a lot of the times. So that kind of expediated this process as well. But honestly, taping off these grids probably took me an entire hour. As you might have guessed, I'm going to be stripping this piece of furniture. I used Ready Strip Advance because it is a less toxic, more eco-friendly alternative to like the clean strip which works in 15 minutes. This one doesn't work super fast, but that's okay. I had so many pieces to strip on this hutch that I decided uh, the 12 to 24 hour like dry time on this stripper was actually good because I could spend one day coating it all and then the next day I would scrape. So this day, um, yeah, I covered the whole thing in what seemed like toothpaste. Seriously, it smelled minty, it was thick and green, and it smeared around just like toothpaste. The important thing is that you want to make sure you get a very thick coat. It's not like applying a coat of paint. The thicker it goes on, the better. And you don't want it to dry really fast, so you want to do this out of the sun on a day when it's like between 60 and 70 degrees. You don't want it to be too hot. And if yours starts to dry um, really quickly, you can do one of two things. You can either spritz it with water with a spray bottle, which I did do. Um, before I went to bed that night, I just spritzed it all down with water to keep it activated and keep it stripping. Or you could, um, you could cover it in plastic wrap and that makes it strip a little better and work a little slower. I also like that this stripper was water cleanup, so although I wore bad clothes, I was not nearly as concerned about getting this accidentally on my fingers or something because it's just not as toxic or as heavy duty of a chemical as other strippers that are out there. So I'd highly recommend, and if you want to use this stripper, it's in the description of this video. You can find the link. So after the stripper was done working, it got this crackled finish on top. Do you see that? And it kind of like shifted to an ivory color. Um, and that means it's ready to scrape. So the best way to scrape this is to again spray it down with water. And I just filled an empty spray bottle. And then you use a 5-in-1 tool or a plastic scraping tool if you're worried about scratching the wood grain to get off the finish. Stripper doesn't completely pull stain out of the wood. But what it does is it knocks off whatever varnish is sealing the wood and protecting it and gets it back to a wood finish that you can easily sand. Some of the crevices on this piece were incredibly hard to get the scraper to pull up the varnish from the stripper. But some of them I just decided to remove after the stripper applied and didn't work so well like this top crown molding. So the molding that was along the top of the dresser, I didn't really like anyway. I decided it was gonna look just fine if I knocked this out. So in this getup, I started to sand. I'm sure a lot of safety police in the comments will be happy to know I got some new gear. 
So I am using my random orbital sander. This is the best sander to use when you are sanding furniture because it moves in random pathways and it's much harder to see your sanding strokes. You always want to go with the grain as much as you can. This was very tedious to sand off as much finish as I could, but if I hadn't used the stripper, the sanding would have taken twice as long. And sanding this entire piece I think I went with like 120 grit or maybe an 80 grit sandpaper, I think 80 grit, um, took me about four and a half hours to do all the aspects of the piece that I'm going to sand. And some of the hutch I even left because I'm going to be painting it. So you can just imagine how long this would take you if you hadn't used a stripper to knock off how many layers of varnish and stain ahead of time. Some of the corners and more detailed areas of the hutch were very hard to get sanded, so I used my oscillating multi-tool with a sanding attachment. This comes in a triangle shape, so it was a little bit easier to navigate some of those little tight corners. At this point, I was happy with sanding, and I was sick of sanding, um, but there were still some areas that were a little splotchy with orange-colored stain, and I knew when I finally sealed this raw wood again, that those would come through. So I'm here wiping down with a tack cloth because I'm going to bleach. I decided to use bleach on the wood after a lot of research because um, I decided that that was going to be the best way to get a uniform color on the raw maple. Now I'm going to be doing a video all about bleaching wood coming up very soon so I would love for you to check that out. I'll get into more details about how this works, dry times, etc. So look for that in the future. Now it was time to paint. I'm using an all-in-one chalk paint in the color Mediterranean. It's from the brand Heirloom Traditions, which I thought was very fitting because this is an heirloom piece. So this color is beautiful. I'm going to be featuring it on all the areas I didn't want to strip, which is like the inside of the hutch. So the whole inside with the shelves and the cubby system and the drop-down desk will be painted. To modernize the desk even more, I went with some vintage arch handles instead of the ornate scrolly handles it had. These were off of a different furniture makeover I did in the past, and unfortunately they were terribly tarnished. So I mixed together some lemon juice and baking soda in an effort to polish them. I wasn't really sure what metal I was even trying to polish, so unfortunately this didn't work out super well. So my next thought was to sand the handles, and I took my random orbital sander and went at them, but unfortunately they sanded down to silver, so they must have been brass or gold plated, not through and through, so I couldn't just sand them back to a beautiful color that I wanted. In the end, I just painted them. The paint I'm using is DecoArt Multi-Surface, and so it sticks to metal, and I also use their paint adhesion medium to help it stick even better since handles will be touched frequently, and I wanted this paint to really stay on. The color's beautiful. It's called Champagne. I've used it in lots of other crafts. Um, in fact, it was just in my concrete craft video recently. I love this paint color. It's a beautiful soft gold. So I thought that this would look really nice next to the natural maple because it would be very subtle. One of the keyholes on the hutch also had a metal piece that had that like scrolly detail that matched the hardware that I took off. So I decided to try my hand at cutting that so that it was more simple and I clamped down um, the metal piece that I was going to cut on just this crap piece of wood that I didn't mind cutting into. And again I'm using that multi-tool with a metal cutting blade and I'm going to very carefully uh, come in and cut that off so that the piece left is just simpler and smaller. These two I painted with that champagne colored multi-surface paint. Another detail that I disliked on the hutch were the legs. So I removed these by taking those off, prying it, and then uh, when that was removed I decided to go with a classic mid-century modern tapered leg. I somehow had this like maple dowel left over. I have no idea where it came from. I just found it floating around in my house and it was perfect. I only had enough wood though for the front two legs. I think if I were to do this makeover all over again I would have liked to replace all four legs with this style but I did the best I could. So these I clamped on my miter saw and cut them to the same height that the existing legs were at. Remember how I said I got this from my grandma-in-law? Well, her husband, Grandpa Mike, is a wonderful woodworker, and he has a lathe, 
So I hopped over to his house and I asked if he would turn these legs for me to be tapered because the dowel itself was just straight across. Now the amazing thing is that Mike um, is starting to suffer from Parkinson's. Watching him on his lathe was mesmerizing because while he shaked setting it up, he was perfectly steady using the chisel and it was so beautiful to watch. So I think the legs are one of the most special pieces about this makeover. To attach the legs, I created a template that I could use to ensure the legs were evenly spaced on both sides of the front of the hutch. I drilled a pilot hole in the spot that I had marked and I also pre-drilled a pilot hole in the very center of the top of the legs. Next, I applied wood glue to both the bottom of the hutch and the top of the leg. Then I stuck it together and unfortunately I couldn't fit my drill in there so I had to do this by hand. I found a rather large screw that was going to work that had a Phillips head because Phillips was the only screwdriver I had that was that short and I made it work. Finally, I was ready for the poly finish. Now, this part was very nerve-wracking for me, as you can imagine, because I had spent so many days and so many hours getting this hutch to a even light-colored finish. Now, the polycrylic did darken the finish, but really what I feel is that it just brought the maple back to its original color. And I love the warm hues in the wood that the polycrylic really drew for. So I apply with a foam roller. If you want to know more about how I like to apply polycrylic, you can check out my video. It'll be linked in the cards as well as the description below. For the detailed areas and the crevices, I did come in with a high quality polyester bristle brush. After four coats of satin poly, it was finally time to remove the tape and begin to reassemble this hutch. However, when I removed the tape, there was a lot of remnant stripper and sawdust and all kinds of junk, as well as little pieces of tape that got cut under the grid and were impossible to then get off. So when you open the doors to the hutch, it looked really bad on the backside. What I decided was to just remove the grid, and I'm actually really glad that I did because I, I didn't love it in the first place, to be honest. It was extremely hard to get sanded and stripped to the same color as the rest of the hutch. And I think that not having the grid really modernizes this piece. I had to be extremely careful with this process because those little wood strips that I'm removing with my 5-in-1 tool and hammer, they were just nailed in and it's so easy to press too hard against the glass and accidentally crack it. So I popped the glass out, took out the grid, cleaned the glass and scraped it beautifully and then put it all back together. In order to replace the nails on those little wood pieces that held the glass in place, I laid down um, the back side of the sandpaper, not the scratchy side, just so that I didn't hammer any of my paint off and I didn't end up having to repaint it all. I was very careful with this process. The little metal piece that covers the keyhole that I had cut down needed to get glued on, so I used E6000 and clamped it into place to dry overnight. This had to happen because before it had little holes where the nails could go in, but this, when I cut them off, then this was my only option. Now it's time to attach the new handles and the vintage arches that I painted that are going to go on the front of the drawers. I had a different spacing between than what was existing from the old hardware. So the old hardware was like three inches and these were four. What I did was I made a template with a piece of paper poking holes into the handle and then I laid that paper evenly spaced on the front of each drawer and that told me where to mark and where I should drill my holes. This was a very easy way to make sure that my holes were centered and my holes were level. I placed the holes as well so that the vintage arches actually covered up the old hardware holes and I didn't need to fill anything with wood putty. That's why I'm doing this after the poly step. So. I wanted to mention at this point that if you follow me on Instagram, you know that my Instagram audience got to vote on which handles were going to be on this hutch makeover. I had three different options and I appreciate everybody who followed me and voted that helped me turn this vintage hutch into the modern style of my dreams. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you can get in on the action too. The link is in the description on this video. Now it's finally time to put everything back together. 
If you've watched this long, you must be quite invested in this makeover. So I want to give you a little backstory from its original owner, Grandma Jeannie herself. Can you tell us about when you first got this piece of furniture? I was going into fifth grade when my parents had to move into a bigger home. We were so excited. We had a, a formal dining room and my mom for the very first time got a, um, a dinette set that included the hutch. I would sit there by that and do my homework. And I loved writing letters when I was when I was growing up, so I would often write a letter to a friend. I had a lot of pen pals when I was in high school and in grade school. So I would write letters to my pen pals. And then when my brothers went off to the service, I often wrote them letters as well. Um, you guys purchased it brand new, right? Right, it was brand new. First time we've ever had anything like that. What year? It would probably be closer to 1960 mm -hmm. or 61 even because my dad died in 1956 and it was several years before we we moved off the farm and then we moved into the bigger house after my younger brother was married when my mom remarried. And was there anything that you did not like about the hutch when you first got it? No, I loved it because it had the writing desk. That was the that was the favorite part of it for me. I wasn't really crazy about the color of it, but that's what was popular in those days. The bright so, orange. Yeah, it was kind of a bright orange, yeah. yeah. How long do you think it's been sitting and waiting to be used again? Well, when we moved into this house, and it's 20 years now, we didn't really have a space for it. I haven't really used it a whole lot, but it, I knew it was always there. And I knew one day I wanted, I would, was hoping that one of my family would want it. And mm -hmm. I, I'm really excited that Lillian is going to have it and, and that it's going to be passed on to the next generation. What are you most worried about now that I'm refinishing it? Like, what, do you have any hopes for what it's going to look like or worries about what it's going to look like? You know, Melissa, you do such a beautiful job on refinishing things, and the things that I've seen you do are amazing. I I have very high expectations. Yeah. It will look absolutely beautiful <laughs> when it's done. Good. It I, certainly can't look worse than the orange color that it is. <laughs> I hope I live up to your expectations. <laughs> and without further ado, here she is. I am amazed at the transformation of this hutch. This went from outdated and orange to lovely mid-century modern with a beautiful soft maple color. On the inside, the bold Mediterranean blue really grabs your attention and makes this look so modern. After taking off all of the scrolled details, and ornate pieces of this hutch, you would never believe it was the same piece of furniture. I love the simple lines, the clean look, and I really, really appreciate the beautiful color of the wood. After all the effort it took for me to strip this, sand this, bleach it, and then re-poly, I'm so glad that I did because this is an heirloom piece. It's a piece that I hope my daughter loves for a very long time and gets passed down to future generations. My sweet little Lily has already used this multiple days to do her math homework. Thank you guys all for watching and supporting me in this huge endeavor. I have so many big things coming up. I'm going to be starting a living room makeover soon, so be sure to stay tuned and follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes footage. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time on Welcome to the Woods. Thank you.